Hey guys, welcome to another video for the Poco F3, the Redmi K40 and the Mi 11X. Now, I know this video is a little late, but you don't have an install video here. You don't have initial impressions. This is a straight 24 hour review. Now, what is the icing on the cake is that this is my personal device. So I flashed this yesterday and I've been using it since the last 24 hours. I've had more than one charge cycle and these are my initial impressions, which should let you know what is new, what are the features, what are the bugs and should you use it as a daily driver or not but before we get into all of that if you haven't already please subscribe and hit the notification bell icon so that you get notified every time I upload a video in the description of each video you will find a link to our telegram community where you have more than a thousand like-minded people chatting with each other so join us there last but not the least if you think the hard work is worth the effort please click on the join button and support the channel now without further ado hello awesome people welcome to phone ops my name is Kalash let's get going All right, so right off the bat, what do we have? This is a port based on the Pixel, right? This is Android S or Android 12 Beta 5. Mi 11X, the Poco F3 and the Redmi K40. It should work on all the three devices. So what do we have here? Updated on the 9th of September 2021. Now there is a disclaimer over here. Just go through it and don't go spamming on the developer because they are trying their best and there might be bugs in this particular build. Now let's talk about the change log here real quick. It says updated to beta 5 and let's talk about the bugs as well. Double tap to wake is not working but you do have single tap to wake which is working like a boss. The installation notes are a little complicated but they are just the same as it was for beta 4.1 so you can follow that video of mine and that is the reason we are not making a new video. Now let's talk about the real deal. Android 12 beta 5. In all probability this is the last ever beta and you will then have a stable release and I'm highly impressed and highly surprised by how well this is running on the Mi 11X and the Redmi K40. You know, I mean, we're going to talk about things one by one. Let's go ahead and talk about the first initial impression of the UI and the look of the home screen. Now, the moment you boot onto the home screen, you will see that you're greeted with more of material you wherein you have the search bar at the bottom with the assistant shortcut or the sound search shortcut and the Google lens and this particular Google feed over here right now there you go so that is the Google search and to the left you do have Google discover or the Google feed as many would like to call it now you do see that we are running in 120 Hertz mode and only when it is updating sometimes it stutters but apart from this is it doesn't really stutter a lot and it is working very cohesively very very smooth for me now you will notice that at the top over here now you do have material you following up that means whatever theme your wallpaper is based on that color your Google feeds top part will also start looking like that and that is something that is pretty pretty neat now, apart from this if you swipe from the top to bottom you do have your quick tiles which are a neat addition from the start it has looked to me like one UI but yes it works great and it looks pretty decent as well now you do have the build number over here so ignore that because this is a beta you do have the edit icon to add additional tiles right apart from this you do have the power menu over here a very convenient place to you know keep it that's what I feel and then you have the settings shortcut we will talk about that in a while now the important highlight over here is you have screen recording and all the other options but the moment you go to screen recording you will see that it allows you to record internal and external audio and you have the option of show touches on the screen so let's click on start you do get the timer over there there you go screen recording has started and as you can see I don't see any stutter whatsoever it's recording just fine right now if you click over here it will stop the screen recording it says processing screen recording so let's see over here there you go screen recording has started and as you can see I don't see any stutter whatsoever it's recording just 
fine. So as far as the screen recording on this particular ROM is concerned, you just saw it works absolutely fine. Now, in the middle of shooting this video, I did get a chance to use this as my personal device with Android 12 installed. You do see that all the apps are installed and I am using this ROM as a daily driver. Now, before we proceed further to check out the features and all the other things, there is one important aspect that I would like to address that you can definitely use this as a daily driver. You might have a few bugs here and there, but I did listen to music on Bluetooth. I did use it, you know, in, using the inbuilt camera and stuff. So it does take care of most of the things pretty, pretty well. And one big highlight about Android 12 Beta 5 is it feels very, very complete now. Now that it is, you know, rumored that this will be releasing on the 4th of October, the final stable version of Android 12, this particular port of Beta 5 on the Mi 11X is working absolutely great. Now, at the same time, you know, we were talking about the quick tiles. So over here, you do have a bunch of options which you can go ahead and use. But if you go to the edit menu, you get a lot more options. As I've said in my previous videos, you do have mic access, camera access, location, invert colors, dark theme, extra dim. So some of these features might be pixel specific and might not have the hardware support over here, but most of them are working absolutely fine. And remember, I am going to do a dedicated gaming review on this one as well. Now let's quickly dive into settings and let's talk about all the things. First of all, you know, I really like how smooth this is running on the Mi 11X. It actually feels like a pixel. The optimization of software, that is the optimization of Android 12 is pretty smooth, pretty amazing, and it works really, really well. So you do have things like network and internet. So I basically have not had any problems with voice over Wi-Fi with the internet connectivity using the five gigahertz mode of Wi-Fi. For example, if you go to internet over here, you will have Wi-Fi, you can go ahead and enable it. And even in the quick tiles, you now dedicated have a dedicated option of Wi-Fi on off and mobile data that was, you know, integrated into one tile earlier, which we were not liking that much because it made getting to the Wi-Fi settings that much more difficult. So let's see over here. There you go. So five gigahertz, 2.4 gigahertz working absolutely fine. You do have similar options to Android 11, you can share this particular Wi-Fi, you can disconnect, you can forget, you can auto reconnect, you can add a device. And at the same time, you do have the network usage option over here. So the Wi-Fi features are working absolutely fine, including Wi-Fi calling. Now, under connected devices, this is really, really important because my noise shots XO connected absolutely fine. They worked absolutely fine for streaming music. So I did not have any problems at all with Bluetooth devices. Now, apart from this over here, you do have the apps section wherein you have default apps. You have a dedicated menu for assistant. You have screen time, you have unused apps and you have special app access. So you have granular control over there as well. Now, moving on, we talk about notifications. You have notification history. So if you enable this, you will be getting a complete history of all the notifications that you've received. And that is a very nifty Android 12 feature. Moving on, you have stuff like sensitive notifications. You can enable, disable that, allow notification snoozing, enhanced notifications. So in Android 12, not only they have paid attention to the privacy, but they have paid attention to the notifications not being missed as well, which is a really, really good thing because if you're coming from a device which is by Xiaomi or Poco, which is using MIUI, probability is you will be missing a lot of notifications. Now, moving on to the important aspect over here, that is the battery life. Now, the charging speed for me has been absolutely okay. I am using App Accu battery over here. Now, you do see over here, it took 27 minutes to charge 30%, which means it'll take one hour 30 minutes or one hour 40 minutes using a 33 watt charger, which I know is high. It doesn't take that long for this device to charge, especially considering it has a 4,520 milliamp hour battery. But the charging is a little slow. You can bear it, right? And if you talk about the discharging over here, see we have around three hours of screen on time we still have 30 percent battery so the battery life is also a little less it's not something that you cannot handle if you're going to be away from a charger for a very very long time i would not recommend this wrong but i have been using this since yesterday and i'm pretty happy with the battery life so i don't really have any problems let's also go ahead and look at the battery settings over here your battery percentage you do have your adaptive preferences and you do have your battery usage over here Moving on, you have storage, sound and vibration. Now, this over here has live caption, 
now playing now i've not enabled now playing because through all the ports now playing has been buggy so i would not recommend you to enable it or you can maybe enable it and try if it is working fine for you and under display you have all the additional options which are working absolutely okay this particular port is always running on 120 hertz you do have the option of increased touch sensitivity which i have kept enabled and if you have a look over here you have display size you have lock screen you have screen timeout and you have screen attention as well moving on the customization menu is something that is really really neat at the same time you have themed icons as you can see over here they worked with inbuilt apps they don't work with you know the third party applications if you go ahead and change the wallpaper the material you will come into action and your theme will completely change which is something really really neat you do have a lot of additional options at the same time you do have app grid as well right so those features are working as expected and the best part about this pixel port is that i can use it as a daily driver as i said earlier i've not had any problems at all under security you of course have pixel imprint for fingerprint scanner that is working absolutely okay right so the phone is not encrypted that is one downside but i have been able to use banking applications so i've not really had any major issues to use banking applications and encryption i don't know when it will come right if you see over here the device is not certified another neat addition of android 12 is privacy you do have a ton of customization a ton of control that you will get over privacy passwords and accounts digital well-being and parental controls as you can see over here set up parental controls or show your data there you have it so you know all in all even in the settings menu you don't really have a lot of stuff but if you go to about and if you click on android 12 you keep tapping on it you bring it to 12 and you will have your android 12 easter egg so more or less this is a pretty pretty rock solid build let's quickly go ahead and have a look at the benchmark numbers which has give us a clear picture if you should be using this as a daily driver or not or if you should be trying this for gaming or not so first thing that we will check is the CPU throttle test. Now as you can see over here, the CPU throttled to 91% of its max performance and the average score is 253,639. Now that's pretty rock solid. That's a good performance, which brings me to think what kernel is this particular ROM running? As you can see over here, it is running the disrupt kernel, right? Now let's quickly have a look at the Geekbench numbers as well. Now there's some inconsistency over here. The single core score is a little low, but fine. But the multi-core score for some reason is constantly coming low. As you can see over here, we easily scored 3000, 3100. But in these two runs that I had on Android 12, the multi-core score was coming less. So I'm not sure if it will definitely affect your gaming experience or not, but it might impact your gaming experience. Now talking about the N22 score over here, we have 648,747. So more or less, you know, the Geekbench issue might be a temporary or a one-off thing i did run it twice all in all the benchmark numbers are great the battery life is okay it's not so great and the charging speeds are a little slow but i've not had any major ui glitches and if you're someone who tries a lot of custom roms i would highly recommend that go ahead and give this port a try there is a way how to install it the android 12 beta 4.1 video is what will apply to this particular rom as well all in all Android 12 Beta 5 on the B11X is definitely a step in the right direction. I'm really excited for Android 12 to come out and then Android 12 custom ROMs. Let me know in the comment section what do you think about this video. Until the next one, this is Kalash signing off at PhoneOps. Keep smiling. Take care. Goodbye.